Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Mahawah, Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, you know, I'm going to do a couple of breakdowns um, just to, you know, pretty much to keep going over uh, to sharpen myself and also those that are new uh, to this truth. And this lesson is going to be titled as Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to break down from verse. We're going to do it a little differently this time. We're going to break down from verse 1 all the way down to, I think, verse 10. And uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And this is uh, Daniel 7 and uh, chapter 1. It says, in the first year of Balsazar, right, Balsazar was the last uh, king to rule in Babylon. He was the last, he was the last king to rule in Babylon, you know, King Balsazar. It says, in the first year of Balsazar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed, right? And he says, then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter, like how brothers do. You know, brothers may have visions and different dreams, and they do a testimony about it. It's the same thing what Daniel's doing here. But I want to go back to verse 1 and read from the top about King Balsazar because he was slain by Darius the Mede. And I'll read this from the top again, Daniel 7 and 1. It says, in the first year of Balsazar, king of Babylon. King Balsazar was the last king to rule in Babylon. And he was slain by Darius the Mede. This is Daniel, because this is the precept for it. Daniel chapter 5 and verse 24. It says, then was the part of the hand sent forth from him. It says, in this writing was written, and this is the writing that was written, Mene Mene Tikal Ufarsin. Uf it says, verse 26, this is the interpretation of the meaning of Mene, of Mene, the God have numbered thy kingdom. It says, and finished it. Verse 27, Tikal Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. It says, Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians, right? Because you had the Medes that came first. And the Medes came first. You had Darius the Mede who slew Balsazar, the king of Babylon. He got, he got killed by Darius the Mede. So you had the Medes that came and then you had the Persians that came. And the Medes, they came in the year, um, I believe it's uh, 586, 586 BCE, you know, somewhere between 586 BC, BCE to 605 BCE, somewhere in between there, you know, just giving you, you know, a date. It says, verse 29, it says, Then commanded Balsazar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck. It says, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. You see, verse 30, it says, in that night was Balsazar the king of the Chaldean slain. See, he was killed. And who slain King Balsazar? Verse 31, Darius the Mede took the kingdom being three score and two years old so he was 32 years old when he slew King Balsazar he killed King King Balsazar was killed by Darius the Mede alright so it was somewhere in between that time there brothers and elders should correct me this is um Daniel 7 and 2 it says Daniel spake and said I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Right. And I read from the top. It says, Daniel spake and said, I saw 
in in my vision by night and behold four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea that's talking about the mediterranean sea that's the great sea the mediterranean sea verse uh three this is daniel seven and three and four beasts came up it says and four beasts uh came from it's like a, it says and and it says and four great beasts came up from the sea diverse one from another and the four beasts that's a reputation of the four major empires which was the babylonian empire the medio persian empire the greek empire and the roman empire those are the four beasts all right and we can prove that going down to verse daniel, uh, daniel 7 and 17 this is daniel 7 and 17 it says the great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth and the four beasts is a representation of the four major empires you had the uh, Babylonian Empire the Medio Persian Empire the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire those are the four beasts which represents the four major empires the four empires now let's go back up to up to Daniel 7 and 3 again it says and it says and four great beasts came from the sea diverse one from another verse 4 it says the first was like a lion right and had eagles wings this is a representation of the Assyrian Empire right they came in the year 720 BCE the year 7 700 702 BCE so like it that's talking about the Assyrian Empire all right, the Syrian Empire, they came in 702 BCE. All right, it says the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. This again, this is talking about the Assyrian Empire, right? It says, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and the wings thereof there were plucked. That's talking about the rising of the Babylonian Empire. You had the Babylonians that came in. So you had the Assyrian Empire and then the Babylonians took over. That's one empire. Then you had the Mede, then you had the Medes, and then the Persians came. That's that's the second empire, which became the Medio Persian Empire. Then you had the Greek Empire, and then you had the Roman Empire. You know, just to edify those so people won't get confused. So again, you had the Assyrians, and then after the Assyrians, then the Babylonians. That's one empire. You had the Assyrian Empire, and then the Babylonians took over. That's one empire. All right, so don't get don't get confused. Let's read that again. And it says, verse 4, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. That's the Assyrian Empire. And it says, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. That's talking about the Babylonian Empire, the rising of the Babylonian Empire. It says, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. The stand feet upon a man. That's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Because he was, a, in that time, he was a powerful man. In that time, he was a great man in that time. You know, it said um, wings that were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given into it. Again, this is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. All right. Nebuchadnezzar came into power in that time. He was a he was a powerful man. He was a great man in that time. He was a, in that time. You know, this is talking about the Babylonian Empire, which was Nebuchadnezzar. Right. And it says, uh, verse 5, it says, and behold, so that's one empire. It says, verse, this is Daniel 7 and 5, and behold, another beast, it says, it says, and behold, another beast, a second. This is talking about the Medio Persian Empire. The Medes came first, and then the Persians. You had the Medes that came first, then the Persians. And the Persians were mightier than the Medes. All right, and this is going into that. It says, like a bear, it says, like, it says, and like to a bear, right? This is talking about the, the Medio Persian Empire. It says, in it, it says, in it, rise up itself on one side, right? Meaning one was higher than the other, and it's meaning that one was greater than the other. Which the Medes came, which came first, and then you had the Persians that were mightier, they were greater, right? And it says, I read from the top and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it and the three ribs that were in the mouth of it was the areas that they went the, the places that they conquered they went westward northward and southward 
That's the three ribs that spoke in the mouth of it. And I'm going to prove that in a minute. It says, and they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh, because they were mighty. Right? Let's go to Daniel, the eighth chapter, really quick. And we're going to prove that this is talking about the Medio Persian Empire. Right? This is uh, Daniel 8 and 3. It says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram. This is talking about the Medio Persian Empire. Right? Which had two horns. Which had two horns. Right? And it said, And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the one that was higher than the other were the Persians. The Persians were mightier than the Medes. You had the Medes, and then you had the Persians that were mightier. They were they were mightier. That's why they were higher. It says, but one was higher than the other, and the higher it says, and the higher came up last. Meaning, you had the Persians that came. So the Medes came. You had the Medes that came in, and then you had the Persians that came in after. Right. Verse four. And I saw the ram pushing westward. Northward and southward that's going into the three ribs and the mouth of it the areas that they went the places that they conquered They went westward Right northward and southward It says so that no beast might stand before him Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand But he did according to his will and became great because they were great the Persians were mightier than the Medes and they were great And let's go down to verse 20 this is verse 20 to talk about, to prove that that's a birdie, the medio Persian Empire. This is Daniel 8 and 20. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. So that's that's who that's talking about. The medio Persian Empire. That was the second beast. So let's read that again. So now you understand who the second beast is. That's talking about the medio Persian Empire. The Medes came first and then the Persians. This is Daniel 8 and 5. It says, And behold, another beast, a second, like a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, right? It says three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, right? And that's talking about the locations and areas that they went. They went westward, northward, and southward. And it says, And they set thrust unto it, arise, devour much flesh, because they were mighty. They were very, they were, their Persians was mighty. Verse 6. Now this is going into the Greek Empire. It says, after this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard. This is talking about Alexander the Greek, Alexander the Greek, and the Greek Empire. Right? It says, which had upon the back of it four wings of the fowl. It says, four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads. And dominion was given to it, and the, the fowl, the four wings, the four beasts. That's talking about the four, uh, the four generals of Alexander the Greek, which was Ptolemy, Cassandor, Seleucus, and Lysimachus. All right, and now I'm going to prove an apographer going into that. That's talking about the, um, that's talking about the Greek Empire, and when you go into First Maccabees. Which I'm going to get out right here. First Maccabees 1 and 1. And we're going to read down. And we're going to go back to Daniel 7. But this is talking about the rise of the Greek Empire. Right? This is what that's going into. That leopard. This is Maccabees 1 and 1. It says, And it happened after Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, and smitten Darius, right? Smitten Darius, king of the Persian and Medes, it says that he reigned in his stead the first it says the first over Greece. So you had the you had the, the you had the uh, Babylonian Empire, then you had the Medio Persian Empire, and you had the Greek Empire. The Greek Empire came in the year uh, 30, 30, 31, was it three three one? Three hundred and thirty one BCE. If I'm not mistaken, Elder Brothers correct me, but it's the year three thirty one BCE. You had the Greeks that came in. That's that leopard, which was Alexander the Great, Alexander the Greek, and the Greek Empire. They, they came into power. Verse 2, it says, It made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. Right? It says, verse 3, And went through the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him 
whereupon he was exalted, his heart was lifted up. Verse 4, and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries, nations, and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick, talking about Alexander the Greek, right? And perceived that he should die. Verse 6, wherefore he called his servants, right? Such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them. The four generals, right? While he was yet alive. And it says, that, so Alexander reigned 12 years and died. So he reigned 12 years and he died. And then his generals took over. That goes into the uh, Diadochi Wars. You had the Diadochi Wars which came in. And you had the generals of Alexander the Greek. They were, uh, they became pretty much enemies. And they were trying to conquer one another's empire. That's when you had the Ptolemy Empire, the Cassandor Empire, the Seleucus Empire, and then you had uh, 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 Lysimachus, right? The four generals. And it says, and his servants bear rule everyone in his place, right? They all, that's what the Diadochi Wars and stuff came in. It says, and after his death, right, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth, right? Because you had the Diadochi Wars, you know. I jumped the gun a little bit, but you had the Diadochi Wars. After Alexander the Great died, they all started to rule and had uh, pretty much rulership of areas that Alexander the Greek had. His generals took over those areas. You know, so I wanted to get that out. So that's the Greek Empire, right? And read again. This is Daniel 7 and 6. It says, After this I behold, and lo, another like a leopard, which had which had upon the back of it four wings of of a fowl and the beast had also four heads and dominion was given unto it this is talking about the greek empire and the four heads is talking about the four generals of alexander greek alexander greek had many generals but the most prominent ones was uh, again ptolemy uh, cassandor seleucus lysimachus and you had antigonus those were the you know five prominent but the main four, because the scriptures only mention four, is Ptolemy, Cassandor, Seleucus, and Lysimachus. Those are the four generals of Alexander the Greek. All right, the four major generals. Verse 7, it says, After this, I saw the night visions, and behold, the, a fourth beast. And the fourth beast is a representation of the Roman Empire. That's the fourth beast. All right, that's the fourth beast. But Roman, but uh, ancient Rome, which is this fourth beast, winded up falling, and it winded up becoming, you know, the uh, it winded up becoming America, which is now uh, America, which is the fourth beast. But this is right here. This beast here is talking about Rome, the ancient Rome, Roman, the Roman Empire. So you had again, you had the uh, um, Babylonian Empire, the Medo Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Those are the four generals, right? And it says. Going back to the fourth verse, seventh verse, it says, This I saw in the night visions, and the, it says, And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, right? The iron that they had. They had great iron. You know, their weaponry was made of iron. Their armor was of iron. They had great iron. All right. Their iron was famished and very strong iron. You know, that's the Roman Empire. They, their iron was great. Their army was great. Right, it says, it says, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and break in pieces, right? Because they had great iron. It says, and stamped the residue of the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. They were greater than all the other ones, all right? Their, their military, their, 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 uh, their weaponry was of iron. They had, they had strong weaponry, they had, they had a strong powered structure, uh army they were greater than all the other empires right and it says and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns now this 10 horns that's mentioned here in daniel 7 chapter it's not the same 10 horns that's in revelations all right this 10 horns is different from the 10 horns that's in revelations this ratification there verse 9 actually verse 8 it says, and I considered 
the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn which that little horn is america which is modern day rome ancient rome did fall but it was rebuilt here in america that little horn became the eighth head which goes to revelations this i think it's the 17th chapter it talks about the seven heads and ten horns which the seven heads is the seven rulerships of the edomites and then you have the ten horns which is talking about the ten european nations but amongst the seven they came out an eighth head which was america america is the eighth head among out of the seven heads in revelations which you get here as america that's the modern day roman empire so this is talking about america right here it says before whom there were three uh there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots that's talking about the british the french and the spanish those are the three uh the it says the three horns like right? uh, the three horns plucked up by the roots that's the British, the French, and the Spanish, right? It says, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great wor uh, things. And this is America bragging about their military, their might, all right? Verse 9, and it says, I beheld till the horns were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit because the ancient of days did sit because the heavenly Father Yahweh, he's going to judge the world. He's going to judge the world. The world is going to be judged, and the Lord, he's the heavenly Father Yahweh, he's going to use his son Yahweh Shai, the only begotten son Yahweh Shai, to do it. This earth is going to be judged. The earth is going to. The world is going to be judged. The Lord is going to judge the world. The world is going to be judged, and the Lord is going to use Yahweh Shai to do it. It says, whose garment was white as snow. And the hairs of his head white like wool, because the heavenly Father Yahweh, he's a so-called black man, as well as his only, the only, as well as his son Yahweh Shai, who's also a so-called black man, right? And it says his throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. And the wheels of burning fire, that's talking about a chariot, all right? The chariots, a so-called UFO. And I got a precept that I want to bring out. We can use. For an example, because when the Lord Yahweh comes back, the Messiah, when he comes back, he's coming back in a chariot. This is uh, Revelations. This is Revelations chapter one. This is Revelations chapter one in verse seven. It says, behold, he cometh with clouds. See, a cloud is a chariot. All right. Which the Lord is coming back on and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, it says, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so am I. See, so the Lord Yahweh Shai, he's coming back on a chariot. That's a chariot. So that, 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 uh, where it says, and his wheels as burning flame, uh, burning as burning fire, that's talking about chariots, a so called UFO, right? Verse 10, it says, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Because the Lord, He's gonna, He's gonna, He's gonna, He's gonna cast His judgment on the world. The Lord Yahweh Shai is gonna do His judgment. The Lord is gonna judge this world. The world is gonna be judged. So wait, I'm gonna stop it there with that. All right, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I just wanted to do a quick hit. Giving all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Yahweh Kakodash. Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well teach well, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word of truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.